This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Family claims asthma patient died after being refused treatment. An asthmatic Portmore man died on Tuesday, mere hours after he was allegedly denied service at a private health facility in the corporate area. The man, Andre Lodge, 24, died at the Spanish Town Hospital. His family members allege that he suffered an asthma attack while on the job and sought treatment at a private facility about 3 a.m., but was told that due to him being in respiratory distress, he would need to demonstrate that he did not have COVID-19 or has been vaccinated against the virus. Lodge's girlfriend, Michelle Ebanks, told the news that Lodge was taken to the facility by a co-worker. Him come to the workshop and the attack was on him. He had a pump and the pump did kind of low, so we had to go for one for him. When we went for it and give him, and that calmed him down a bit. After that point there, we realized that wasn't enough for him, the co-worker said. He said that when they arrived at the medical facility, Lodge told the security guard that he was having an asthma attack and needed to see a doctor. Him opened the gate enough to make the young man walk in. Not even ten minutes no pass, I miss the young man walk out, and him said to me, say, Boy, Benji, you know say I be a foolishness, them a tell me do. Them a tell me say me need to do a COVID test. And them tell him to go home and go use him nebulizer, or something like that, he added. The CEO of the healthcare facility said that he has heard about the matter, but was not in a position to comment on it. He referred the news to the head of matron, but efforts to contact her were futile at the press time. Ebanks said that her boyfriend left the health facility and headed home, where he decided to use his nebulizer. However, when his breathing did not improve, she made arrangements to take him to the Spanish Town Hospital, even using the pump in the car. It did not help as Lodge was pronounced dead shortly after his arrival. Lodge's brother Alex, who also has asthma, said he is appalled at the lack of care that his brother received. This is not about money or anything, cause nothing can bring back Andre. I want to let these medical staff know that asthma is not like broken arm or something where you can tell someone to go home and rest off. It's something where you cannot breathe, he said. I don't know if someone ever choked you yet, but for you to tell someone who is telling you they cannot breathe, they are dying based on the fact they are having an asthma attack and you have the audacity to send them home. Like Alex, Ebanks said her hope is that people treat asthma with the same seriousness as COVID-19. Before COVID came in, people were having asthma all along. Right now, if you are sick and you are wheezing, they are going to say it's COVID you have. There needs to be an awareness for asthma people. They cannot take it so lightly, she said. Lodge's case is the second involving an asthma patient to have surfaced since the COVID-19 pandemic began last March. Jalisa McGowan, 17, died at the Andrews Memorial Hospital on February 26 after she was allegedly refused medical assistance at the University Hospital of the West Indies while experiencing an asthma attack. Reggae Girls team manager Jean Nelson has died. Former footballer and the national senior women's football team manager Jean Nelson has died. She passed away on Saturday after a short period of illness. Nelson, a former Jamaica Women's Football Association president, was one of the persons responsible for the formation of the National Women's League in the 1990s. She was also the team manager for the Reggae Girls throughout their FIFA Women's World Cup campaign, which culminated in the team's debut at the finals in France in 2019. Usually when the anthem plays, I close my eyes because it's so deep, so I expect it to be very touching, Nelson was quoted as saying regarding the national anthem before games. I have always wanted to serve my country. It's fulfilling. It's an honor. The Jamaica Football Federation says Nelson was a stalwart and a giant in her support of women's football. The JFF sends sincere condolences to her family and friends, and especially the reggae girls who has lost a matriarch. May her soul rest in eternal peace, the JFF said in a press release on Sunday.
Vaccinations come into a church, doctor's office, pharmacy or community near you, said Dr. Christopher Tufton. Jamaicans will soon be able to receive their vaccine against COVID-19 while shopping, while at the church, at their doctor's office, place of business or in their community. This is expected to materialize soon as the Ministry of Health and Wellness has advised that it is seeking to expand its vaccination access points with an invitation to the private sector through a request for quotation for their participation in the national vaccination program. The ministry in a statement Sunday said the RFQ is aimed at small, medium and large enterprises that may be faith-based, community-based or existing health facilities such as pharmacies, hospitals, health centers or doctor's offices. This initiative will, as a clear objective, seek to expand the access points for different clients who will be able to receive their vaccination while shopping or while visiting their doctor's office, said the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton. Tufton was speaking at the press conference and COVID conversation hosted by the minister last Thursday. We welcome all private sector, faith-based and community-based organizations to go to the ministry's website at www.moh.gov.jm and download the documents, Tufton said. The ministry noted that, as of 11 a.m. Sunday, September 12, Jamaica had administered some 632,384 doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Of that number, 468,304 were first doses, 150,273 were second doses, and 13,807 were single doses. The ministry continues to encourage Jamaicans to get vaccinated against the COVID-19 to help prevent serious illness, hospitalization, and or death. For details on vaccination sites, members of the public can visit vaccination.moh.gov.jm. Jamaicans are also reminded to be vigilant in their adherence to infection prevention and control measures, namely mask wearing, maintaining a physical distance from others, and the frequently washing and or sanitizing hands. COVID claims another cop. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is mourning the death of another member. The news understands that Inspector Miguel Johnson of the St. Andrew North Division died from complications associated with COVID-19 on Sunday. He is the, the second policeman to have died from the respiratory illness in less than a week following the passing of Montego Bay-based Constable Damian Knight last Monday. Johnson had reportedly been admitted at the National Chest Hospital after falling ill. The JCF is also mourning the sudden death of Inspector Michael Brown last Tuesday. The senior officer was on shift to commander duty in the Hanover Police Division in Lucy when he collapsed. He was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Opposition wants Integrity Commission to probe AAJ's first rock deal. Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson wants the Integrity Commission and other relevant anti-corruption agencies to urgently probe the multi-million U.S. dollars investment by the Airport Authority of Jamaica in First Rock Capital Holdings. It is reported that the AAJ board went against an initial recommendation not to invest in First Rock. Robinson is also maintaining that the board of the AAJ should be fired for breaching its own internal investment policy and government's public bodies management and accountability act when it invested U.S. $3 million in First Rock. The high levels of corruption that continue to linger around and plague the wholeness government demand effective and conclusive action from the agencies appointed to protect the public coffers and safeguard the interests of the Jamaican people, Robinson said. He wants the Integrity Commission to determine whether there were conflicts of interest and if the investment met standards for good governance, accountability and transparency. In July, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark said the investment was in breach of the government's regulations. However, Transport Minister Robert Montague 
who has portfolio responsibility for the AAJ, has not made any public comment on the matter. The silence of Minister Montague demands that the matter must be elevated to his boss, Prime Minister Holness, who has the ultimate responsibility to the people of Jamaica to act in their best interest, said Robinson. He insists that the Prime Minister must publicly state why the board remains in place given that it has breached its fiduciary responsibility. 27 more COVID deaths, 560 new cases. Jamaica recorded 560 new COVID-19 cases and an additional 27 deaths on Saturday, according to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The latest data brings total coronavirus infections in Jamaica to 75,857 and the virus death toll to 1,731. The ministry reported that the new cases comprise 323 females and 237 males with ages ranging from 2 days to 96 years. The cases were recorded as follows, Kingston and St. Andrew 105, St. Anne 89, St. Catherine 65, St. Mary 65, St. Thomas 56, St. James 52, Trelawney 39, Westmoreland 32, Manchester 26, Hanover 26, Clarendon 3, St. Elizabeth 1, and Portland 1. Meanwhile, the ministry said the deaths occurred between August 27 and September 10. There are 24,058 active cases after 116 people recovered from the virus. Also, the ministry said 773 people are presently hospitalized due to the virus, with 119 patients severely ill, 57 in critical condition, and 160 moderately ill. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.